like to welcome you to Yellow Creek Park, and this is the Adrian G. Carlson Cross Country Trail. We're going to give you an online preview of, of the course today. Uh, we actually began running on this current layout here in 2006, although meets have been conducted here since the early 70s. We've just come off the starting line, and uh, our course has about 110 uh, permanent 4x4 posts that mark the route. Each post is painted for directional assistance to the runners as suggested by cross-country course marking regulations. Of course, the yellow post you keep to your right, and it means a right-hand turn. The red post you keep on your left and it usually means a left hand turn and then the blue post uh, means that you continue straight ahead and again this is in line with the standard colors that courses should be marked with. From the starting line to the first turn uh, as you see the red post coming up is actually about 250 meters. It's a fairly gentle turn and uh, we head down a hill for about another 100, 120 meters. So from the starting line, uh, you have a, a fairly long straight with a gentle turn uh, until you get to a little harsher turn at the bottom of the hill. Our course has what I would call three parts, an inner loop, which is 1K in distance, an upper loop which is also one kilometer long, and an outer loop which is 2K in distance. The course is pretty unique in that we can race about any distance, 3 kilometers, 4K, 5K, 6K, or 8K, and use the same start and finish line. This bottom part of the course is about 150 to 200 meters long, uh, kind of a circular sweep at the bottom uh, before we head back up on a long stretch toward the start-finish area again. As we come to this corner, you'll see a, a bridge there that, uh, uh, that we'll be crossing later on. But for now, we're going to take this left-hand turn. And then you'll see the long straightaway that leads us back up toward the start-finish area. Our course is also, is also marked with permanent signs uh, every kilometer uh, and every mile split of the four different distances and they are color-coded. The 3K course splits are identified in black on the signs. The 5K is identified in red, 6K in green, and the 8K uh, layout is identified in purple. For the 8K race, the coach can actually stand pretty much in one place near the starting line the start finish area and get splits for the first, second, fourth, fifth, sixth, and of course the 8K at the finish uh, off from that one spot. Here we're going through a couple of uh, gate, as, if you want to call it that, uh, where there's uh, two blues. Uh, again, here's uh, the purple 8K. Uh, I believe that was a three mile marker for the 8K. We're approaching the uh, one kilometer mark, uh, that 3K, <clears throat> that three mile marker I showed you is just, uh, just to show you the, uh, how the course is marked. At this corner here, we actually are going to go straight, but I want to show you uh, a turn here that uh, if we run in a 5K, we would turn 
uh, there. So we just finished basically the the upper loop, or I'm sorry, the inner loop, and uh, we're getting ready to start what I call the upper loop. Again, the inside loop is a, is a kilometer in distance, and now we're beginning the what we call the upper loop, which is a kilometer in distance also, and then we'll do the outer loop, which is two kilometers. Right now we're 1K into, uh, into the, the layout. Our course record here for 5K is actually 1529 held by Aaron, Evan Ehrenheim of Davis County High School uh, in 2010. Evan actually went on to become the Kentucky State Champion that year. Our girls 5K course is 1755 by Christy Hell from Louisville Manual. And we actually have not established a women's 6K course yet. The 8K course record for men is 2451, and we've been running this course for, uh, this will be the fifth year. We're into the upper loop now. We just crossed a, a, a road, and we're in the upper part of the park. And we'll soon be approaching the one mile mark. Today we're showing you the 4K loop, which is an inner, an upper, and an outer route. And then again, we'll explain the different distances. Uh, although this course is fairly flat, the lower part of the inner loop is deceptively lower than the upper part of the uh, near the start and finish area. And you make a very gradual, barely noticeable climb uh, two or three times during the race. Still yet, I would consider this to be a fairly fairly fast course. On this course, we also have two parts uh, of the course that we have given names, and we'll identify those as we get to them. But there's a little cove uh, below the lake area that we call Mosquito Valley. Actually, it's a very pleasant part of the course, which is almost always shady. And as you came out of there about a quarter mile later, you'll enter a short section that the park uh, calls Flintstone Junction where there are seats and tables made out of stone. We've just passed the mile mark uh, for the 6K in and 8K. And again, as you see, there's, uh, the course is, is fairly flat in most of it. We have a little dip here and uh, make a little left-hand turn. And we're probably 200 meters uh, away from finishing the upper loop and then we'll start the outer loop. Again in turn of distance in terms of distances uh, our inner loop is one kilometer our upper loop is the same and our outer loop is two kilometers long. So a 5k on this Courses and inner loop and two outer loops into the finish area. A 6K is an inner, upper, and two outer loops. And an 8K is an inner and an upper and an outer loop, which totals four kilometers. And then you repeat that. From our starting line, we're almost uh, finished with our upper loop now, and you'll see the sign on the left coming up, which says uh, 2K, and that's our 2K mark for both the 6K and the 8K course. 
This is one of the sharper turns in the uh, on the course, but we uh, make a turn here, and now we begin what we call the outer loop, and it starts with about 150 meter straightaway before we uh, uh, cross a uh, road and head down below the dam. The lake is over on the right. You might be able to see it in the picture here. It's actually below the shelter on the right. Now we're quickly approaching uh, what we call Mosquito Valley. And then on this lower, uh, lower outer part of the course, we, uh, we have Mosquito Valley with a stretch of about 400 meters across to what we call Flintstone Junction. This is a little cove that we're entering now that we call Mosquito Valley. It's actually probably about a 400 meter loop through here. As I said, it's a pretty pleasant part of the course. It's usually uh, any time of day, it has quite a bit of shade. This is the very back of Mosquito Valley, and now we actually begin uh, a straightaway, which uh, probably extends out of this little cove and about 400 yards across the field into into Flintstone Junction. But this is a, a fairly long straightaway. The footing on the course is actually. Uh, pretty good. The Parks Department does a great job of helping us maintain this course. It's, uh, it's mowed year round. Uh, as you can see, uh, one of the parks uh, workers up here coming up ahead uh, mowing part of, the, part of the grounds even today. Again, this long straightaway is uh, the link between Mosquito Valley and Flintstone Junction. Flintstone Junction is just uh, about a 100 meter stretch where there are tables and seats made of stones. It's a uh, kind of a picnic area. Above Flintstone Junction is actually a hill for those more mobile course, uh, coaches. You can stand on that hill and get uh, splits 
It's about 200 meters from the start and finish area, but you can jog over, stand on a hill to above Lestone Junction to the left here, and you can get splits for um, for the splits that you can't get in the start and finish area. Are most of them are right here. And you can actually stand on that uh, hill above the Flintstone area, especially in the in the late fall when the leaves are falling, and you can see runners coming out of the uh, out of Mosquito Valley, long stretch across through here. So you can see uh, a pretty good part of the race right there. We're getting ready to turn out of Flintstone. Uh, Coming out of Flintstone, we're going to make a left-hand turn, but just for your information, uh, this bottom parking lot, uh, across the way you'll see an iron bridge, and across that bridge, you can actually, uh, there's actually uh, about a mile and a half loop in there of really uh, nice trails, and it's a great place to warm up or cool down. Uh, from the starting area uh, down to the bridge and through the trails and back up to the starting area is about two miles, so it's a, it's a good place to warm up and again a good place to cool down and get a little uh, distance in after the race. Those trails are not a part of the course, but it's something that we want to show you as a just for your convenience. So at the end of uh, Flintstone, we have this left-hand turn. And now we're back down at the uh, bottom of the course. Uh, even though we're still in what we call the outer loop, it uh, is also a part of the inner loop now to the, to the bridge we showed you earlier. So this is the very bottom of the course we've been through here before. about 600 meters left in this outside loop. Again, this is where we made a, a turn earlier when we were on the inner loop, but uh, on the outer loop here, we go across the bridge that we showed you earlier. And again, we're probably about 450 meters uh, from where the 4K ends. And then we, if you're running the 8K, we'll repeat that 4K. We feel like our course here is a very good layout. It's certainly well used on just about any given day from the middle of summer through the fall. There are about eight or 10 meets on this course. Uh, in, in the fall, there's eight or 10 meets on this course, including some elementary races, Kentucky and Anna Border Clash, the Orangeboro High School Invitational, Fast Cats uh, High School and College Invitational, City County Meets, the Regional Meets. It's a very well used course. And of course, this year we had the Midwest Athletic Conference Championships uh, hosted again by Kentucky Wesleyan College. But uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, from the middle of the
the summer on this course is, is used very almost daily by, by local athletes. We're actually on uh, a parallel path to uh, up toward the start and finish area that we uh, were on parallel to the, where we were at earlier when we were on the inner loop. We're coming to what we call an upper bridge. So we have a lower bridge and an upper bridge. When we cross the upper bridge, uh, after we do the 4K loop twice, uh, we will actually be uh, sprinting into the finish line and then the women's 6K, to explain it, we're going to do a 4K loop also. But instead of crossing the start finish line, we're going to angle off and do another outer loop. So the, four, the 6K is in a 4K loop basically and, and, and then a, 6K, a 2K loop combined. And then the women also will come across uh, across the bridge into the finish line. From here we have about a hundred meters. If you were finishing the race, you would be going through the black post. Uh, you have about a hundred meters from here to the finish line. And the two tall posts there are the finish, finish post. For the 8K and the uh, 6K though, after this 4 you actually go uh, to the right side of these black posts uh, and uh, again repeat the 4K for the men and the women do an extra 2K.